Hello. Welcome to Model Logs. Today, I will try to share some basic idea about field effect transistors or as commonly called FETs. Before we begin, please note that I made this presentation by using pictures and diagrams that I got from Google search and I don't claim any kind of ownership to these pictures. All right. Let's get started. First, let's look at the content presentation and understand the structure. We will start with giving a definition for FET, then we will look into the classification and get to know the different types of FETs. We shall then briefly look into the construction of FET. After that, we shall see how an FET works. We will then compare FET and BJT and determine which one is better. Lastly, we will look into a numerical and I hope the method we discuss there would serve to be helpful while doing experiments in electronics lab. So, what is an FET? By definition, FET is a unipolar electronic device that controls the flow of current using an electric field. By unipolar, we mean that the device uses or manipulates only one type of charge carrier, either holes or electrons. The use of electric field can be justified with the analogy of magnetic field. Just like a magnetic field attracts magnetic materials, electric field attracts electrons. FET can be considered as a voltage controlled current source. FET has three terminals and they are drain, source and gate. Below given is a symbol of a N-channel JFET. Classification of FET. The first type is JFET or junction FET is the device we commonly refer as FETs. Then they are subdivided into N-channel and P-channel JFETs. The second type is insulated gate FET or IGFET. Just as the name suggests, there is an insulation layer at the gate. MOSFET is the most common type of IGFET. It can be further classified into enhancement type and depletion type. We shall see about MOSFETs in another video. Construction. The figure shows the structure of a N-channel JFET. As it is N-channel, the main current path will be the N-substrate. Thus, two P-substrates are diffused into the N-substrate on either sides. The two P-substrates are shorted together using metallic contacts and it is the gate terminal. The drain and source terminals are connected as shown in the figure. That's pretty much all there is to the construction of JFET. And now we shall move on and look at how JFETs work. Typical connection of an N-channel JFET is shown in the figure. As it is a PN junction at the two gate terminals, we know that a depletion layer will be formed. Now, imagine that a negative BGS, gate source voltage, is applied across the gate and source terminal such that the depletion layer will grow and completely block the channel. Now, from this, we get a very important value, that is the gate voltage at which the JFET becomes completely off. We call it BGS off or pinch off voltage VP. Upon giving BGS values higher than VP, we can get the JFET to contact and thereby allow drain current ID to flow. Now, when the current starts flowing and voltage VDS is in effect across the channel, we can expect the accumulation of positive charges as shown in the figure. The region near to the drain will have a larger positive charge than the region near the source. Thus, point A is more positive than point B. This also means that the depletion layer will have a different shape as shown. Let us assume VDS to follow the equation VDS is equal to VGS minus VP. From Kirchhoff's voltage law, we know that VGD at point A is equal to VGS minus VDS. Then from these two equations we get VGS minus VDS is equal to VP. That is VGD is equal to VP or the off voltage. Thus point A will be at off state and B will be at a constant voltage due to the pre previous accumulation of charges. And thus we can say that for a constant VGS supply VDS should be less than VGS minus VP and further increase 
will result in a constant drain current ID. From the inference of the previous slides, we can analyze the output characteristics of FET. The curve can be divided into three parts. The ohmic region is when VDS is less than VGS minus VP, and then it enters the saturation region. Further increase in VDS will make the JFET to break down. The drain current in saturation region is given by the equation ID is equal to IDSS multiplied with 1 minus VGS upon VP the whole square, where IDSS is equal to drain source saturation current. Now we shall take a quick glance into the significant differences between BJT and FET. BJT is a current controlled current source, that is the base current IB is given for collector current IC to flow and IC is equal to beta times IB, whereas FET is a voltage controlled current source, ID is a function of VGS square and it is not a linear relation. Second, BJT has low input impedance, that is it draws current. In the case of FET, it has high input impedance, thus it will not draw current. 3. BJT consumes more power than FET. 4. FET has a higher switching frequency than BJT. Due to points 3 and 4, FET is preferred over BJT in modern computing as there will be more speed and less voltage draw. Now, we will look into a problem and explain how it is beneficial for lab experiments. The problem presented to us is a typical example of FET biased in the saturation mode. We have previously known values IDSS is equal to 12 milliampere and VGS off is equal to minus 3 volt. Our aim is to ensure that the biasing is correct. We are now going to find out the voltage values at each point. VGS is equal to VG minus VS and VG is equal to 15 upon 150 kilo ohm plus 750 kilo ohm multiplied with 150 kilo ohm. We get this from voltage divider. Thus VG is equal to 2.5 volt. VS is equal to ID into 1 kilo ohm. Therefore VGS is equal to 2.5 minus 1000 ID. We know ID is equal to IDSS times 1 minus VGS by VP the whole square. Substituting the values, we get ID is equal to 3.81 milliampere. Therefore, VGS is equal to minus 1.31 volt. VDS is therefore 5.48 volt. Now we shall compare VDS and VGS minus VP. We get VGS minus VP is equal to 1.6 volt. Thus, we know VDS is greater than VGS minus VP. Thus, it is in saturation mode. Now, this is the theoretical part. We can take the multimeter and check the voltages at each point while, do while doing the experiments in lab. Thus, ensuring that the biasing is correct before we start doing the experiment. Thank you.